All right, really quickly, ladies and gents, I want to show you how your thoughts literally control everything in your life. So everything in the universe is made out of energy. You, me, the whiteboard, these markers, everything is created by energy and energy vibrates at a certain rate, a rate of vibration, a frequency. And so because everything in this universe is energy put into a physical format, when you think of Einstein's E equals MC squared, energy is as matter, then that means all things function in the same law, the law of vibration, because it's the most basic and the most baseline, the foundation of all existence is the law of vibration. Things vibrate at a certain rate of vibration, which is why water is water, which it turns to steam when you boil it, which it turns to ice when you freeze it. The same thing for everything in this universe. That's why if you get shot in the arm, your arm explodes. It's because it's all made up of energy put into an intellectual format which is what allows us to see the arm here, but when it gets broken up due to a higher rate of vibration item, like a bullet traveling through it, well, bam, your arm goes everywhere, it scatters. And by the way, most atoms, or most of an atom is nothing but empty space. And so it's crazy when you think about we are mostly empty space, yet we perceive it as a physical being. But anyways, thoughts are vibrations. Thoughts can be measured in the frequency that they transmit. That's why some people could read thoughts. That's why we're empathetic creatures as human beings and we can determine, hey, this person feels a certain way or the energy in the room is a certain way. It's all based off of the same law, the same concept, the law of vibration. And so when it comes to vibrational frequencies, we have positive and we have negative. We have high frequency and we have low frequency. So as you'll see here, for example, we have up at the top, positive energy, down here in the bottom, negative energy. And then here in the middle is like this mixture. It's like almost like this melancholy up and down, up and down. This is where we start to see the transformation of energy from negative into positive. So let's talk about this a little bit here. When we wake up in the morning time, it's the first thing that we do. We go into our cell phone and we start diving into all this negative information because if it bleeds, it reads. The brain has really two main priorities. Conserve energy in terms of like not burning energy. Don't be wasteful of your calories because it doesn't know when it's going to eat again subconsciously or unconsciously, I should say. And stay safe from death and harm. Don't get hurt because that's the preservation of life. And so ultimately, if the preservation of life is like the number one main goal of the brain, but we're going to break it down into two right here today because it's going to tie in here in just a moment. So conserve energy, stay safe from death and harm. Well, if it bleeds, it reads. Negative information draws us in because it's associated with death and harm. And so if we see something is going to be harmful to us in our well-being, our brain naturally gets magnetized towards that. We have a negative default belief system automatically because that's going to tie into our brain's preservation of life. Positive experiences aren't associated with life or death situations. And so negative experiences are, which is why we're always so drawn and so magnetized towards negative default belief systems. And that's why we get so tied in to watching the train wreck. It's so horrible, but you can't look away. News articles, economy, politics, all that bullshit is designed to get you to view it longer because that's what gets people paid in the news media industry. And so if it bleeds or reads, we have a natural tendency to drift towards negative default thoughts, negative default items, because that's going to resonate with the survivalist part of our brain. So that means if we're constantly thinking about fear, hate, and uh, envy, that's all operating in the negative realm of vibrational frequency. You see here, it's a very long, negative, low frequency wave that we're emitting. When we're in this state of mind, it's survival based. There is no creative thinking. Think about when you get into an argument with somebody and you can't think of all the great things that you want to say to them. And then hours after the argument, you're like, oh, I should have said all this stuff. Well, you didn't think about it in the moment because when you're in a survivalist state of existence, the creative part, the conscious part, the outermost region of your brain, the neocortex, that actually shuts down and you don't get to think creatively. Instead, it puts all the energy, all the focus down here into the primitive part of the brain, that sympathetic nervous system, the survivalist part of the brain, and you do what? You fight or flight or freeze or fawn or whatever they're saying these days. It's fear-based or a fight-based response. And when you're operating in that fear-based or fight-based response, again, you don't think creatively, you only fall back to the greatest level of training that you've ever received. And since we are not in a true life-threatening situation, we're just operating in a negative state of consciousness, 
we're shutting down our creative faculties. And when we shut down our creative faculties, there is no real fear of fight-based response that we need in order to survive. But instead, we're still operating with the neurochemicals in our body associated with surviving. And our brain is still shutting down and going into that high anxiety, high stress mode of operandi or operation. And so that keeps us stuck wherever we're at in life, and it actually further perpetuates you into more of a negative cycle, which I'll explain here in just a moment as to how that happens. But my point is that the information that we take in from our external environment directly affects how our brain and our body neurochemically is going to respond. And if we are feeding ourselves negative information, especially when we first wake up in the morning, well then we're basically just fucked throughout our day because now we are creating neural connections in the brain. So here's our brain up top. This is conscious and this is subconscious. In the conscious part of our brain, we're creating all of these negative thought patterns and we're strengthening them because the more that we do something, the more solid or the more solidified those neural networks become. And the more solidified those neural networks become, that's when we get habits. And when we have certain behaviors or thought processes that we don't even need to think about anymore, well, that's a habit. And that's what we call a paradigm. It's a result of our personality. And that's going to directly correlate with our actions that we have every day. And that's going to directly correlate with the quality of life that we have. Because if we have negative energy that we're emitting and we have no creativity and we're strengthening those negative neural connections in the brain, which is easier to do because of our negative default belief system based off of survival, then what we're doing is we're just walking around in a low vibration, a low frequency all day long. And what that does is that begins to prime your brain, what's known as the reticular activating system. And that reticular activating system is it's strengthens those negative neural connections, it's now going to draw your attention and focus on things like negative outcomes, negative things in life, always seeing the dark side, the glass is half empty versus the glass is half full. That's another survival mechanism built in your brain associated with seeing things that you deem important in your environment. So if you go back in the day, you're hungry, all of a sudden you start to see the berries on the bush. Or if you're in a large crowded room and you hear somebody just mention your name in casual conversation, you could hear that because it's of importance to you as somebody is talking about you in a social context. But going back to the survivalist in the wild, well, hey, now you're more likely to see the berries because the reticular activating system in the brain, this neural network of survival, says, hey, look for little blue berries in the bushes or look for these types of leaves. Look for that shade uh, of green on those leaves. And so reticular activating system now focuses your attention towards whatever it is that you're deeming important, which is based off of the solidified neural networks in your brain that are associated with your continual thought process and behavioral patterns. And because it's negative, that's all you're gonna to start to see in this world is negative things. And because you're operating in a survivalist state of consciousness, you're not creatively thinking. And people don't get rich and wealthy off of working hard. Yes, they do. But I mean, I see people laboring all day long out in the docks over in the construction yards and they're not multimillionaires. Why? Because it's creative thought. It's hard work combined with creative thought that is what creates wealth. It's inventions that create wealth. It's enhancing and progressing humankind for the better that creates great wealth. But you can't think creatively if you're in a survival mindset, if you're in a negative state of vibration. So, how do we elevate ourselves from this negative state up into this positive state? As you see, here's the transformation where we go. Envy is like one of the lowest forms of vibration. Hate, fear, anger. Then we have like frustration, hopelessness. But from hopelessness, we have hope and then kindness. And that's when we really start to see this small shift and the small change in tide. And this is honestly where most people operate in is where it's like, hey, I'm hopeful and then I'm hopeless. I'm hopeful and then I'm hopeless. I'm you know, gonna conquer the world and then I'm fearful. Why? Because it's so easy to get drawn down into that negative state of belief because it's survival based. And so as we go about our day, we're just being pulled further and further and further down. Think of it like gravity or like a magnetizing force of negativity that we always get drawn towards, especially as we get more tired throughout our day. It's easier for us to become susceptible to those types of belief systems because if we're tired, we're vulnerable technically. Think about in the field and in the woods and back in the day, safari land, 
the more tired you are, the more negative you're going to be because you don't want to have to deal with running from a lion when you're very, very tired. You don't have to deal with it to begin with, but you really don't want to deal with it when you're physically exhausted and can't possibly escape. So everything becomes more negative, uh, that much easier and much more dramatically. So how do we get ourselves up here? Well, when you look at the positive vibrations here, you have love, gratitude, service. When we serve other people, that's why it feels so good, is because we are grateful for what we have and love is an action, love is a verb. And so when we're performing acts of love, then we elevate our frequency into that of a positive existence. Now the same laws and the same fundamentals are true. When you're operating in that elevated state of consciousness, that positive vibrational frequency, the reticular activating system gets turned on, and now you start to see the positive things because you're strengthening the neural networks in the brain associated with positivity. So as you're connecting those positive neural networks and as you're strengthening them by repeating it over and over again, well, your brain switches over to seeing the positive. Now, this is why it's so important to start your day off with good positive affirmations and information and visualizing your goals and where you wanna be in life and writing it down in a journal. Is because when you wake up and work out, when you wake up and do all those things and work out, you're changing the neurochemical disposition in your body, meaning the hormones and chemicals in your body when you work out, which is why you feel good, that actually elevates your energy. That pumps you from down here all the way up to the positive. And then you combine that, the more senses we could stimulate them, the more solidified those neural networks become. So you're reading positive quotes, you're saying them out loud, you're writing them in your book. Maybe you have some scented oils that you're associating while you're doing these things. So the more senses we could stimulate, the more emotion that we could evoke, emotion, energy, and motion, then the more solidified that neural network becomes in the brain, whether it's positive or negative. Then, the more we do it, it actually gets programmed into the subconscious and becomes that habit. So now we're habitually thinking positive. Now we're habitually activating the reticular activating system to where we're seeing new opportunities in life. We're seeing things that are operating at that same vibrational plane because it's like the law of attraction, which is really the law of vibration, law of magnetism. If you're operating up here at a high vibration, you can't pick up these low radio waves. Up here, we're operating on station 101.1. Down here, we're operating on radio station you know, 79.1. And it's like an AM channel versus an FM channel. You can't pick up the same music on those different frequencies. And so it's really important that you start your day off with good, positive information. You work out, elevate that neurochemical disposition, keep the phone off, keep all the social media stuff off, elevate that belief system and your frequency because as you go throughout the day again, it's still gonna try to drag you down. So what do you do? Do 100 burpees, do 200 burpees. Get yourself elevated again so that you feel energized. And then you're raising that rate of vibration and then you're feeling more motivated and you're capable of actually seeing those opportunities because you're priming that reticular activating system. Now do this for 30 days. Wake up this way, give yourself that midday boost for 30 days. And don't use drugs or weed or alcohol or any of that stuff to cope or compensate for any of the things that you're struggling with. Feel that pain, use that pain as fuel and change it, remorph it, restructure your brain patterns so that when you think about X, you start to perform A. And when you start to think about X, you start to perform B as opposed to Y and Z, which is where you drink and get drunk and stupid. And then you just further perpetuate that down cycle of pain that you're existing in. It's very important that you understand everything you think is a thought that, that, that vibrates energy from you. And that energy is going to directly correlate with the frequency that you operate from. And that frequency that you operate from is going to affect your emotions and the quality of your emotions affect the quality of your actions. And the quality of your actions are gonna affect the quality of your life and what you're capable of seeing and what is brought to you in terms of opportunity. Things just exist. I think good and bad is somewhat you know relative, but that's a story for another time. But what isn't relative is the fact that these laws exist scientifically for your benefit. So you and I can live in a world of harmony and of peace, but we just need to understand that we have negative default belief systems to begin with because it's associated with survival. And if we can consciously intervene against those negative default belief systems by waking up, good hydration, good nutrition, which is super important. There's like 100 million or billion neurons, brain cells in your stomach, by the way, in your gut. But with good hydration, good nutrition, good thought processes, positive affirmations, writing down our goals, 
stimulating those senses. By doing that every single morning when we start our day off, we're starting all the way up here. And then, yeah, as the day goes, we get brought down by that negative default belief system. That's fine. We'll just bump ourselves back up and keep moving forward. And we do that for 30 days. And I guarantee you guys, your life's going to change. That's how you stay focused on the positive when everything is burning down around you. I know my life was falling apart so many times. I, I don't even have time here to describe just the instances in which my life has fallen apart in so many different ways. But what I can tell you is... Last year, a little over a year ago, when I put my family in $260,000 of debt, I didn't even have all the assets or liquidity to pay it off. I stayed focused on what I could affect in a positive context. I wasn't ignorant, but I didn't allow my focus and my attention and my vibration and my energy to be drawn down into this negative, hopeless pit of despair. Instead, I just remained focused on the positive, what I could fix, I had belief in myself, and then I just started serving other people. And when you serve other people, you have gratitude. And when you have gratitude and service, that is an act of love. And when you act out of love, like true love, and it's not just, oh, I love people, and you're just facading it, well, then your life will begin to change. Try this for 30 days, guys, and let me know what your thoughts are. It's going to be difficult. And if you fuck it up, just start it over again. It's okay. We all screw up on all sorts of things in life. But it's important that you realize that you're capable of true greatness. You can do anything in this life. It's not a joke. It's not some hippie bullshit. You know, that's just what it is, guys. It's the laws of science that are made to exist for us. Laws of the universe. So try it out and let me know your thoughts.